What's going on guys? Michael here from 3D Print Everything and does anyone know the leveling procedure? Because honestly speaking, um, any 3D printer trying to get support from China can be difficult. I uh, am just trying to go through the process of not having to go through them. But like, let's see if you can see it here. It's a little hard to see, but I don't know if you can see. Let me see here. Maybe is there a better way? So it's it's not as drastic in this exact view here. I can see it in person really well. Can you see that bed going up and down? Um, the issue is, is this bed is not level. Out of all my other machines. This bed looks like it's high, it, it, it's high on one of its corners by a significant amount. A significant enough amount that it, it quite literally is n not giving me a consistent uh, layer height on a part of the bed. Um, so we can see like quite literally where the printer starts going down over here and how we have a better print layer here than what we do over there. And, and I've actually seen this shift. Um, in some of my other ones, I had a much worse initial layer over in that corner, and it didn't really reach over here. So this printer is really struggling with its auto bed leveling to make it perfect, and, and it's just not. Um, so that means that I have a manually unlevel bed. Um, like, like, look at the, you see how much that's having to move? Now, is that all the way across? I'm pretty sure it is. I haven't, I haven't kicked one of these upside down, but I'm pretty sure Bamboo does, does, uh, the triple lead screw with the single belt. It's a smart choice, but... You know, that's the ramifications of it is this, this print bed is having to move quite a bit up and down on, uh, on this print here, which is in turn affecting the, uh, the initial print quality. And mostly what I'm concerned with is that's just putting the nozzle a little too close to the bed, which eventually will wear out my print, my print bed. Um, cause it, cause it trying to take that off you know, if I don't have enough good release material like that nanopolymer, it's going to uh, it's going to potentially be hard and or rip the bed up or rip the part off um, and break the part. So if you know how to adjust that, please uh, comment down below or if you've seen a video on someone adjusting it, that would be great. Um, I might then make a video on my own so we can see on these other ones that they look they look perfect there is no bed issue but you see this one and you can just see it just clear as day um you know none of these other ones are having this issue so this isn't just some type of like hey this happens um no it's it's on one of 20. if you've got one and it didn't happen to you um then you know obviously you, you know you're like the masses in that uh look at that thing just dancing <laughs> that's wild um you know you're like the masses in in that that the majority of these things don't have that issue um where you know it seems only one of my machines is having that issue um but i want to fix it you know i don't need to return it it's already too late to return it i don't want to deal with going back and forth with bamboo on it um, and I'd rather learn from the community community and then teach the community. So, you, you know, if you're sitting there like, why don't you just contact Bamboo? I could. Um, but it's more entertaining, funner, and I'd rather make that relationship with you than with having to go back and forth with Bamboo. Um, and, and you, you know, my normal path of doing it is generally just figuring it out. And I've done it on a P1S. If it's anything like the P1S, you know, the process is probably going to be something like, Take this, flip it on its side, uh, undo the Z belt, and it's just one of the three corners that's out. And yeah, you know, I think Bamboo teaches, at least on the P1S, that you take the bed and you ram it all the way to the bottom, 
and then you tighten the belt and it should be level. Um, the way I did it is the way that I'm used to doing it on old printers, which was I took it up to the nozzle and ran the nozzle around and made sure that the nozzle was within, you know, the teeny bit of a distance that I wanted it to be, uh, you know, essentially just before scraping on all the corners and then I tightened it down. And, and I found that that gives me a more reliable uh, finish because if there's anything that obscures, obstructs, or messes it up from the bottom, or if the bottom is just not level for whatever reason, if, if you do it at the nozzle level, you know that the nozzle is going to be there. And I've, and I've fixed and improved several P1Ss that had uh, that issue like that. So I might have to go through that um, path with this, but if there's a different way of doing it than what I just described, uh, please comment down below and let me know or if there's a resource I can watch of someone else doing it um, I would do that as well, but thanks guys. I just wanted to show that uh, Yeah, this h2s out of mini is the only one I have that has a pretty severe out of level But not so out of level that it tripped anything. So this is a this is one that passed QC that in my opinion um, I wished they had caught um, it's probably one or two tooths on a belt off, and that's, that's all it really takes uh, to get there. It could be even three, um, but it's somewhere between one and probably four tooths on a belt off to being perfect. Um, so we'll investigate that and mess with it later. Otherwise, thanks guys. Like, share, subscribe, spread the video. Um, I greatly appreciate that. Comment down below and uh, comment if you've stayed this far to the end of the video a emoji of a car or truck and uh that would be cool if you can do that <laughs> i'm just gonna pick random emojis on all of them you know i think the star I, I know some other youtubers just do star emojis all the time but maybe you know we can make that a fun part of our videos is that uh, at the end of each video i'll call out a different emoji so you want to you want to stay to the end to hear what that emoji is and then comment it down below because comments like that do help the channel um i do my best to answer all the comments sometimes i'm very late and i apologize if you uh got a got a notification that i that i replied to your comment two weeks or two months later um but i, I i'm in a good place right now where i've got a good flow i've i've got everything set up you know i'm not having to to rush to finish um you know something like setting all this up or completing a job that that i'm super behind on or something like that and i'm not typically super behind on something but yeah you know when i set all this up this was this was like two weeks of solid work to get just this this and that put together set up and then cleaned up this room to the point that that it was acceptable um took a lot of work so that was a lot of work that i wasn't spent on emails and on 3d printers um so i did have some backlog but but yeah I, I i'm here now i can be reliable i'm thinking of a lot of good content to to create and uh just want to help share that with everyone so i don't know how to make short videos uh but i do know how to talk <laughs> so thanks for listening guys um and you know it, this is the last thing I, i'm just gonna rant just teeny bit more just when you thought it was over. Um, I, I really don't like how I sound. Like when I hear myself in a video, I just don't like it. So I don't rewatch any of my videos. I don't, you, you know, constructively or from criticism think like how I can do it better or how I can sound better or, or just do something better because I just, I really hate listening to myself. Um, you know, how I hear myself talk in person versus how I hear it from from an audio signal it, it just really gets me I you know I sound normal and okay slash good in person to myself but when I hear it through my phone or through my car speakers or through a video that I've recorded I feel like I sound super nasally like my na like my sinuses are just constantly like this like this is what yeah you know like when I hear myself doing this is how I think I sound in <laughs> the video. And it's probably even worse. And I, and I definitely won't be rewatching that little part there. But, uh, you, you know, maybe, maybe if I intentionally lowered my voice, it would sound better on video. So if this is a cooler sounding voice, or you think, you know, me just lowering my pitch 
intentionally uh, that would increase the uh, the quality of my videos, then uh, maybe I'll intentionally try to hold uh, a, a lower tone or lower voice because I, I, I really just feel like my normal voice is uh, very high and, and nasally and I, I hate it. I hate listening to it, but if you think that me potentially holding a lower voice would make the video sound better, um, if this is a more enjoyable tone to you and, and, and you can comment about that, then uh, maybe I'll try to hold that um, and, and actually create a, 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 deeper, a deeper tone for my videos, possibly even change it throughout my life, who knows. But uh, yeah, anyways, one of my insecurities that I just shared with the internet for no good reason. Thanks guys, like, share, comment, uh, some trucks, tell me what you think of my, my uh, tone change there, and we'll see you in the next video. Later.